time right now is 8.30. Good way, uh, Monday morning, welcome to the WLBB Community Voice on News Talk 1330 FM 106.3. Streaming live online at Newstalk1330.com. This morning we're on the News Talk 1330 WLBB Facebook page. You can see my handsome young guest, and I'll introduce you to him here in a second. I know many of you uh, heard my voice this morning, and you're already shutting off your radios because you're missing Steve Graddick, because I know this is, uh, <laughs> this is his day. But he is in studio and uh, if he doesn't like the way this show works out, I'm sure he'll pop in here and, uh, and make it happen. Uh, I'm going to introduce you to my guest right now. This uh, wrote a press release. One of our um, uh, employees here at Grady Communications wrote a nice press release on him uh, titled, it, He's Coming Back Home. The gentleman started his broadcast career here at WLBB, WBTR, back, back in 1979. Spent four years locally before heading out to Anniston, Alabama, where he's been for the last 24 years. His career has been marked by numerous accolades, including being named the Alabama Sportscaster of the Year in 2022 by the National Sports Media Association. As the voice of the Gamecocks, he's uh, been the lead announcer for Jacksonville State University Athletics, where he's called some of the most historic and memorable moments in the university sports history. His dedication to excellence has earned him a spot in the uh, JSU Athletics Hall of Fame. His name is Mike Paris, and uh, he is our new sports director, I guess officially as of today, the Grady Communications Sports Director. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And uh, I'm going to get in trouble in a hurry. That's so <laughs> normally Steve Graddick does this, and he doesn't do it this morning. He got a little oh, hurt. I'm hurt. He I'm was hurt. intimidated is what you said. He was intimidated <laughs> oh, yeah, by the new right. sports director. If any talk about anything with a ball, uh, he just... Yeah. He would, have, he would have made it political. He was afraid I would ask for a raise first thing. First thing in here. <laughs> he, uh, anyway, it's good, good to meet you, Mike. Thank it's the first sir. time nice I've met you, though. Yes. But, um, my gosh, uh, apparently legendary in uh, West Georgia and I'm East just, Alabama. I'm just old, man. That's all it is. I was excited because I, I know you're over at Jacksonville State, and uh, a lot of people know that I grew up in West Virginia, and one of our uh, former football coaches is over there now. So I'll try to take advantage of our new friendship and uh, see if we can get an autograph. Although, once you say, yeah, the guy's from West Virginia, he may roll his eye. Even though he, he's, he's born in West Virginia. Right. But his exit was not great. No. He was not, uh, he was not adored as he left uh, West Virginia to go to Michigan to uh, bigger and better things. Not only is he from West Virginia, we have probably three or four other staff members that uh, or West Virginia natives or either were coached with him up there, as a matter of fact, as well. And, well, we've got, we got to hope you guys pull out some big wins then. Right now, 0-2, right? Well, uh, Jacksonville State. Hadn't been pretty so far. But, but two bigger teams, though, yeah, right? Yeah. And, uh, well, uh, we just didn't play well against Coastal. I thought we played better Saturday, but Florida uh, – excuse me, Louisville. With Florida State's troubles, I think Louisville's probably got a shot to win the ACC now, and they're 2-0 and and got a pretty good quarterback. Got his sixth year in college playing uh, quarterback, so – uh, we took our lump Saturday. They they got it going the second half a little bit. So West Virginia fan here, but we had North Carolina State guy in there running cameras. So he's talking about the ACC. He'd be oh, disappointed. Oh, the Volunteers beat up on yeah. your boys the other day. And, and, I, and I can never say anything bad to him because I'm always coming in after West Virginia's lost on the weekend, so I can never uh, say anything. Although we did whoop up on uh, University of Albany uh, this weekend. <laughs> the Danes. The Danes, right, the Great Danes. All right. Let's talk about you, Mike. How did how did we get lucky enough to drag you in here to our little measly programming uh, thing here in West Georgia? Well, actually, I, I started here. Uh, my first job was a part time job in Griffin, Georgia. That's where I went to high school to live there. But my career, I guess you could say, began here. I worked here from seventy nine to eighty three. And it was uh, it was it, I had, it LBB double. and BTR was a combo at that time. Okay, LBB at that time was on the on same a signal, uh, different frequency. Okay. But yeah, it was eleven hundred AM as a matter of fact at that time. And I remember, in fact, uh, in the process of, of moving a while back, uh, we had the thirty third anniversary of the radio station during that time. I, and we did some keychains that were like a LP, you know. Uh, that sort of thing. And how about this? Cigarette lighters. <laughs> those old cigarette lighter holders. We did those for the anniversary. And you can do it now. My, yeah. how times have changed. Absolutely. So, but I worked here from 79 to 83. Went through an, an, an ownership change was was, was part of that. Uh, but I will say the time I was here, um, the general manager at that time was Bob Thorburn. Uh, I came in right as football season started in 1979 and from that point on, I was really the only person on staff that had an interest in sports, and that was one reason I got into radio at that time was a chance to – sports is all I've known all my life. I, look, I can't be a handyman or anything. I can't <laughs> fix anything at home. i got to call somebody. So, 
Uh, but he basically, he, hey, if we can sell it, we'll do it. So that uh, he, I basically could do what I wanted to from a sports standpoint there. And I did a lot of other things, obviously. Worked an air shift. In fact, I was uh, in that seat you're in at one time. Hmm. I guess you could say, uh, but got my start here, then went through the ownership change. I went to Anniston in, in uh, 1983, started to work over there on Monday, did a high school game on Thursday. I knew nobody, no clue, nothing about what was going on over yeah, there. Yeah, we were talking about that, how important uh, it is to kind of know, uh, you know, know recognize right. the players when you're talking so, about them. So I've been there 42 years in the in the Anniston area and, and was fortunate, the station I went to work for, the – uh, the gentleman there had done the radio broadcast since like 1945, mid to somewhere early to mid 40s. He owned the radio station, or was about to buy the radio station, I should say. At that time, it was an AM/FM combo as well. And uh, that first year, I did the games, but he was with me. And and after that, he just he turned it loose. So this is 42 years for me, or has been. And I actually, re- uh, Jacksonville State hired me in a full time capacity in 1995. I worked radio there from. 83 to 90, worked for the cable system. Don't tell Steve I was selling advertising. Uh, from uh, 90 till 95, and the university hired me in full-time capacity in 95. And I retired actually three years ago, August 1st of uh, 21. And when you retire from the state of Alabama and you go back to work for a state entity, you have to have a separation period, minimum 30 days. So I went back September 1st as a part-time employee just to do the radio broadcast. So I'm a part-time employee still at the university, and all I do is our radio broadcast at this point. Uh, well, as a kid, I, two questions I can ask okay. you about 1979. I guess, first of all, did you catch yourself in front of the TV, uh, you know, broadcasting? Is that how you got into it, you think? is that uh... Actually, no. I, I grew up listening to Milo Hamilton do the Atlanta Braves. Skip Carey, when he came to Atlanta, he came to Atlanta to do Atlanta Hawks basketball. He was their radio voice, the Atlanta Hawks, and was arguably one of the best ever to do radio uh, basketball, NBA, and listen to him. And uh, I guess Ed Thelenius was the guy at that time early when my childhood was doing Georgia stuff, and he went to work for CBS. He did the Falcons when they started, when they formed the franchise and went to work for CBS doing Falcons games in Atlanta. And then Larry Munson replaced him, and that's, you know, grew up listening to him. And uh, some, too, Al Serraldo at, uh, at Georgia Tech was a longtime radio voice there. John Ferguson at Tennessee. And um, my dad's a, a Baptist preacher, and we moved to New Orleans. He went to seminary, lived out there two and a half years. And, and uh, geez. So uh, you saw I me, mean, you saw that performance. I mean, there's a presentation as a Baptist preacher. I mean, that. <laughs> I tell everybody that's where I got my gift sure. of gab. Yeah. You know, my dad was a preacher, so or, and st- he's retired, but he still does at, at eighty five. If if there's a pulpit available, he will find it. I'll put it that way. <laughs> well, so nineteen seventy nine till eighty three, you were mm-hmm. here, right? Right. I mean, that's and I could be wrong as far as the timing, but wasn't it about the time that Mitch Gray started? Did uh, you it work was with, right in that time. Did you work with him at all? Was he? Uh, at, he no, we work for competing stations. As a matter of fact, yeah. sure. uh, but now I've known Mitch. You know, since I. Once I came to Carrollton, met him early on at that point in time, as a matter of fact. So we had so, competing stations doing yeah. high school football right. and doing sports yeah. and, and local coverage. Yes. So, and, and, uh, that's before actually Steve Craddock made it a monopoly, took over they everything. Didn't yeah. have monopolies at that time. Right. The, the government changed things. Right. Uh, actually, when West Georgia resurrected the program in 81, I did the broadcast the first year in 81. And uh, – during that ownership change, we lost the, the rights, I guess you would say, mm-hmm. and then Mitch stepped in from then and was uh, up until his health issues then. Yeah. Was, had been the longtime voice of the Braves at West Georgia. Well, our, the current voice of, or the new voice of Grady Communications is Mike Paris, and he is our guest on this morning's Community Voice Program, the new sports voice of uh, Grady Communications. You've already done some games this year, right, for yeah. Grady? Actually, I did. Uh, uh, this is interesting, and a lot of people may not realize this. At Jacksonville State, when I was first hired, even though my job, I still did the radio broadcast, I was in fundraising and marketing, basically sponsorship sales is what it was. And initially, I was not an athletic department employee, so I could still do sports. But we made the move from Division Two to Division One, and then I became an employee of the athletic department where the NCAA rulebook in, in Division One athletics says – if you're an employee of the athletic department, you can't do radio, TV, public address. You're not even supposed to do an interview on a high school broadcast. So I went about almost 25 years and couldn't do anything as far as high school uh, stuff. Um, had I stayed as a non-athletic department employee, it would have been fine. Mm-hmm. And this only applies to Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three. It doesn't affect you can do what you want to from that standpoint. 
So anyway, uh, I was from roughly 25 years. I couldn't do anything. So when I retired and became a part-time employee, then I was okay to, to do some high school stuff. So actually, in, in uh, 21 that year, I did Rome High School football for a station there. And then I came back home for a year in 22 and did games here in 2022. Uh, and then uh, was back in the area over there doing high school games last year. And, and this, is, this opportunity has opened some other doors. And, or when this door opened for me, I took advantage of it. I'll put it that way. So uh, I'm, I'm back home, so to speak. My wife and I live in Tallapoosa. She's from there. Uh, probably will never leave Harrelson County, as a matter of fact. So, uh, how, about, but how, about, how about the transition from college to, to I mean, uh, broadcasting the college games to high school? Is there much difference at all? Uh, the only difference is the information is more readily available at the collegiate level than yeah. it is high school. Uh, all football coaches at every level, all coaches, let me put it this way, all coaches, 99.99% of them are paranoid. They think if they tell you or give you information, it's going to end up the, the opponent's hands or whatever. So it's just tougher to get information from a high school standpoint just to get a roster to have names and numbers on mm-hmm. it. Or if you get one, half the time the numbers aren't right. You know, it's, that's, that's the biggest difference, I would say. All right, Mike standpoint. Paris is our guest on this morning's Community Voice program. As of today, he is officially Great Communications Sports Director. Um, and uh, hope to have you here for a long, long time. Do You'll be doing the morning um, – the. Was a wide open three, a little three minute uh, sports cast that we have in the morning. We'll be doing that as well. You're doing a great job with that. So I, I, I enjoy it. I don't do mind you? it, but I just think that you will do a more <laughs> local job. I mean, I can I can cheat a little bit and get information from the Braves and uh, you know, and University of West Georgia. But I, I, mean, I expect that you'll be able to get more Correct. local That's things plan, like tennis and volleyball and pickleball by next year. Pickleball. Right. I hear somebody laughing in the background. We must have a pickleball player in the building well, here. It's because it's just taken over. I mean, it really oh. is just taken over. And they, I mean, and I think all the superintendents locally have said, yeah, we expect to see it part of high school within the next Well, you were asking about our head football coach, Rich Rodriguez, mm-hmm. the uh, place that he bought in Jacksonville. He's added pickleball courts to his home, his homestead there in Jacksonville, mm-hmm. as a matter of fact. That's well, good. good. I look forward to uh, visiting him <laughs> sometime in the next year. We're going to take our first break here okay. this morning's Community Voice is brought to you by Tanner Health System and Oak Mountain Academy. Health is a journey. It's making better choices, even when it's not easy. It's taking care of yourself and the people you love. At Tanner Health System, we're there for you with every step, with primary care, heart care, cancer care, women's care, orthopedics, surgical services, and so much more. We're dedicated to helping you live and feel your best. So let's get on that journey to health. You've got places to be for many years to come. Find us at Tanner.org. The World Language Scholar Journey at Oak Mountain Academy is designed to provide students with a clearly defined curriculum-based track to acquire essential knowledge and skills for success in biliteracy fields of study. The successful completion of this journey provides colleges with a method to recognize a rigorous foreign language immersion experience for all students at Oak Mountain Academy. I'm Patrick Uran, head of school, inviting you to journey with us on the mountain. For more information, visit us at oakmountain.us. Discover your journey at OMA. Prepare, explore, and achieve. Eight forty-three. Welcome back to the WLBB Community Voice on News Talk thirteen thirty FM one hundred six point three. Streaming live online at News Talk thirteen thirty dot com. And this morning we are on the News Talk thirteen thirty WLBB Facebook page. My name is Colin Worthington. My guest is Mike Paris, and uh, he is joining Gratic Communications as our brand new sports director. I believe we have a brand new host. I don't know if it's this morning or not, but coming up this week, a brand new host on uh, B ninety two Country as well. Uh, Steve Graddick, I mean, he was he was heard saying, you know, finally we're getting some talent in here, and um, so yeah, that was that was nice. It's nice to see Steve happy finally. Well, the guy that's taken over mornings is an Alabama guy. In fact, we've been in the market together, never worked together. I've known him just about the whole time I've been in Alabama, as a matter of fact. So uh, I haven't he's heard a good him one. Yet. He's talented. He is. I haven't seen him yet, but he's got the morning the country radio station right. morning show name anyway, right? right? Tex. Tex Tex Carter, yes sir. Yeah, so hope you uh, check him out this week and michael vincent uh, is helping him out yeah mike uh mike was filling that role for about the last month or so but man that guy works uh, 20 hours a day and uh, I'm sure i don't know how he does it i'll put it that way yeah he'd like a little bit of time off. have you got to meet everybody uh mostly am i the last one with the great communications that you're meeting uh you may be yes uh there might – I don't know. I think that you may be the last person. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Well, it's just the way it fell out. Yeah, that's um, – yeah, 
how about seeing you work the, all the time though too right I do, yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. what i thought how about seeing that you know young we do have a nice mix of uh, some younger right. talent right. Uh, with the older folks who may have our be set in our ways as far as radio and, and maybe appreciate radio a little bit more just maybe a little more nostalgic for it you know i mean but we do have a good little mix i think throughout the, the radio stations well, even though i've been doing the radio broadcast i really haven't been involved in radio per se radio station that sort of thing wow since about uh 1995 i guess yeah, something yeah. like that uh even when i had left uh, the stations and and uh, was doing some stuff on the with cable folks there in the aniston area i still did some radio stuff with them too some sports stuff and whatnot at that time uh, for a couple of years after that but i uh so i'm a little Let's just say it's a whole lot easier with modern technology with some stuff in radio than it than it was in the old days. They got no clue, man. It's splicing tape together, right, oh, yeah. oh, awful, terrible. Yeah, look at him over there. He wouldn't have a clue how to do that. I bet. <laughs> Talking about Joel Bronk, our our camera guy in there. Joel always streaming our programming. Also streams uh, Carrollton City Council and Carroll County. He'll be streaming Carrollton City Council tonight too, so you can watch uh, that stream on the News Talk thirteen thirty WLBB Facebook page and the tailgate shows on Friday. O'clock. Before high school football, he does those. He, too. He's in all of it. Yeah, he's, he's a busy man too. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, we all are. We all yeah. we, we all do try to keep. Uh, Granite keep busy. gets his money's worth out of it. What do we see you doing over the next? I mean, you know, officially today is what we're saying that you're taking over. But you got to develop some relationships, right. I think, to kind of get into those, uh, you know, those right. localized stories. What do you see yourself doing over uh, the next? Spending month? Spending a lot of time doing that, uh, especially with uh, the morning sportscast. That that'll be concentrated heavily on local stuff to begin. with with and then you know braze affiliate as well so we'll do that and the dogs and the yellow jackets and the falcons and whatnot hawks too but mainly we'll focus concentrate on local sports is what we will do from that standpoint with those th- those three minute updates of the morning as a, as a jacksonville state announcer can you say are there other teams that you like i mean do you follow other college teams and- let's just say i might bark every once in a while right. would that would, would that tell you uh, those folks in athens uh yeah uh, that's who i would uh, probably if if I'm not at Jacksonville State and I have an open date, uh, thanks to my wife, I'll be in Athens. Probably is where I will be. Yeah, Graddock's a Georgia Tech graduate, and it, oh, he I, did. But he did. I didn't know that until the last few days. And he, so. I don't even think he knew that Georgia Tech was in the top twenty-five last week, <laughs> just for that moment. And by the course, by the time that we tell him, that they'll be gone. They, they've already that, fallen yeah. out. Yeah, with that loss, but it was exciting for a second or two. I think that we, uh, yeah, we, we should have shared it with him. We should have let him uh, reap that. Uh, uh, celebrated that knowledge, but we didn't. We didn't even uh-huh. tell him. Didn't even tell him. Didn't even see him last week to tell him. But oh well. Uh, Mike Paris is our guest this morning again. He is uh, the new uh, sports director for uh, Gratic Communications. You keep up with other sports? Do you think that you're oh, really? Yeah. Um, uh, well, football, basketball, and baseball. But that's, that's me too. Those right. three top. Yeah. Um, but especially from the college side of things, you know, softball, uh, girls, women's softball has become very big. Uh, so, you know, follow that. We've had a successful program for a number of years at Jacksonville State. In fact, our coach had been there. Tell you how old I am. She and her twin sister, they're from just across the state line at Spring Garden, Alabama. Uh, she coached softball. The other twin coached basketball for a while for us. They played for us. So I go back to their days when they were basketball players at Jacksonville State and then their coaching career. And I told her I knew I was really old when, when she retires, you know, at, at, not only as a player but a coach at 31 years at Jacksonville State as well. So I knew I was getting old when we had second-generation players coming in and, and especially in football their dads played for us oh, and I, yeah. I did their games I was the you know doing games when their dads played now you got the their sons are at Jacksonville State we've had a few of those in in the last several years so and uh, you know when I was here in 79 my hair was a different style and different color and, and all that stuff but to well, come it's, back it's a good looking mop Mike thanks for bringing <laughs> that up you're changing color it's, uh... it didn't it, it didn't fall out it just yeah. Uh, like the leaves, it changes. It changes colors. It, it, there are still some people that from 1979, believe it or not, uh, that uh, I reckon you know people that I built relationships here. That it's been nice to to visit with them and uh, to see them again and spend some time with them. Uh, and I'm sure they matter. followed you. I mean, here, mm-hmm. I'm sure they followed you know Jacksonville State. Of course, mm-hmm. I could hear that game, the game mm-hmm. streaming online mm-hmm. too. Well, in fact, Mr. Graddock, one of his former stations that he owned, was a, an affiliate of ours mm-hmm. for several years. So we were, I was, you could hear me in this market for a while at one time as well. 
Um, but I go back a couple of years ago, um, the games, as I mentioned, I get at some games in 2022. It was over at Central. A guy that uh, that played at Central uh, during that time saw him. He was doing the PA or something over there, you know. First time I'd seen him in forever, I guess. Uh, longtime Central coach Ronnie Birchfield. Uh, uh, he was a neighbor of mine, as a matter of fact, I guess you would say, uh, when I was here. And uh, uh, before I went to – to Aniston with the new job, but anyway, I've seen him through the years, but I spent some time with him a couple of years ago. Got to see him quite a bit. Bill Bailey's a retired coach now. I've run into him. Uh, some of the folks in Harrelson County that were around during that time. So it's it's been neat. Uh, uh, there's uh, I'll, I'll throw a name out. Uh, he and I worked together when I was here. Andy Mickishon. He just done some broadcasting through the years. I go to the the third round of the golf tournament. Uh, we played a week ago Thursday to open the season at Jacksonville State. So that Saturday, I'm at the golf tournament there at the Tour Championship, and we're trying to cross over. And somebody says, "Whoa, wait a minute!" You know, we got a cart coming through, and it was Andy over there working. You know, so it is a fraternity. Yeah. You think about oh. the people who have been in sports oh. crash, uh, sports casting, broadcasting. I mean, you think about from eighty onward. I mean, mm-hmm. it is a little fraternity where you guys all you know kind of keep in touch oh. and remember each other and. And uh, it's it's been neat through the years. Um, um, Jeff, uh, excuse me, Scott Howard over at Georgia. I don't really know him that well. Jeff Dantzler does their baseball, and uh, I've got to know him because we played them in baseball some and, and spent some time with him. And up until I, I came to Graddock for the little over the last year, I'd been doing a morning sports show at a local station in uh, Oxford, as a matter of fact, Oxford, Alabama. So uh, a lot of the guys uh, – I was leaning on a lot of, I'll call them radio voices, different schools and whatnot. I had a lot of guests on my show. Those guys are doing the radio broadcast. And um, you mentioned an award I won. I went to a meeting, uh, the ceremony to receive the award a couple of years back. Uh, well, actually, a year ago was when it was. Won the award for 22, and the ceremony was in the summer of 23 was when it was. But to, to meet some people around the country and whatnot like that was, uh, you know, pretty neat for me. A lot of people who've done this for a long, long time. Mm-hmm. We uh, when we hear you broadcasting, uh, you know, maybe doing sports shows or podcasts. Are, are you somebody who gives an opinion on anything, or do you criticize? Uh, any sports? I, I I will stay away from that uh, from uh, from the high school and college standpoint. No, I might criticize somebody professionally, you know, because they're getting paid a shekel or two to do yeah. that. And some, I, you know, I've heard some people, you know, with the sentiment now that college players are getting paid so they're they may be game before it's all over with some things i don't know but i usually stay away from that what games have you broadcast for so are you broadcasting one school majority of the time harrison first, county right harrison now county. yeah and, okay. and going back a couple of years ago uh i did central games i did a couple of bowden games during that time uh, i did one Carrollton game as well during well, that so time. i was, so. was going to focus on bowden i mean being, being able to broadcast for bowden or you know City of Carrollton, so all, all of our schools, you know, we should be proud of equally. But Carrollton, I mean, getting so much national attention right. now. Bowden's two-time defending champion, and you know, right now, no reason to think that they couldn't come close exactly. at least again this year. They got an excellent chance to make it a three-peat. I can tell you that. Yeah. Um, and it was this way back in 1979 when I started, and it's still true today. There's a lot of community pride. I'll put it that way. You know, with with the uh, their favorite school with, with you know, a lot of support, a lot of fan support and whatnot still to this day. Mike Paris, our guest on this morning's Community Voice program, introducing him today as uh, Gratty Communications' new sports director. We are on the News Talk 1330 WLBB Facebook page, so if you want to post any comments or questions up there as we come back for our final segment, I'll be sure and share those. Uh, time right now, 854. Community Voice is brought to you by Tanner Health System and Oak Mountain Academy. Health is a journey. It's making better choices, even when it's not easy. It's taking care of yourself and the people you love. At Tanner Health System, we're there for you with every step, with primary care, heart care, cancer care, women's care, orthopedics, surgical services, and so much more. We're dedicated to helping you live and feel your best. So let's get on that journey to health. You've got places to be for many years to come. Find us at Tanner.org. The Entrepreneur Scholar Journey at Oak Mountain Academy is designed to provide students with a clearly defined curriculum-based track to acquire essential knowledge and skills for success in business and leadership. 
Critical areas include identifying entrepreneurial characteristics, selecting a value position, and business model development. I'm Patrick Uran, Head of School, inviting you to journey with us on the mountain. For more information, visit us at oakmountain.us. Discover your journey at OMA. Prepare, explore, and achieve. Eight fifty-five. Welcome back to the WLBB Community Voice here on News Talk thirteen thirty FM one hundred six point three. Streaming live online at newstalk thirteen thirty dot com. My guest this morning, Mike Paris. He is a great communications, brand new sports director. So you're going to hear a lot more from him. I guess see a lot more of you uh, around town and at football games right. and, and sporting events. Um, I, I think we kind of take for granted that that listeners always call us with you know uh, or, or send us emails with sports scores and things like that, and we do we do need to count on the community to, right. to do that because we all can't be in all those places at the right time. I'm guessing you're going to have an email set up and everything and encourage people to, I don't to think, do that. I was going to turn around and look. I can't do that. Uh, uh, yes, I'm supposed to. I'll put it that way. So, yeah, I'm sure it'll be blowing up here before too long. Yeah, and, and, and we'll have it on the, the website right, exactly. for all the information. But, um, you know, are, are there sports that you'd like to see us give more coverage to? We've talked about doing some things. Of course, high school football is a big thing, yes. and, and and I know they've done some other stuff in years gone by, so hopefully we'll be able to, to continue that and do those things as well. Ba- uh, basketball, baseball, maybe some softball, whatnot as well. Pickleball. Pickleball. Pickleball, you know, we, we, We've tried to – at least a couple times. We've, well, I, think, I think we've had basketball teams out for uh, – um, for, for fundraisers and things right. like that, but maybe we can get a softball team now. We got somebody, uh, you know, get some connections, so we can start doing that for uh, for charity or something like that. Right. I mean, look, I haven't played in twenty years. There's there's an alternate baseball league, um, a gentleman who's uh, who runs that. I think they're actually playing in Aniston. Was it Brick? No, not Aniston. It's in um, Birmingham, uh, the Brickhouse Stadium. Is that what that is? Brickton. Anyway, alternate baseball league. They're coming here to Carrollton in, huh. in uh, like the twenty second of September, and there's a couple of former Braves that are playing on that too. Wow. And he's asked, I didn't know that. Uh, he's asked us to have a, a representative out there, and uh, and I was I was excited about it. But I have a great memory of me playing when I last played in two thousand four, and I you know kind of don't want to ruin that when I'm out there you know keep sweating. That, keep after, that memory. Keep that perfect memory that you have. Uh, are you, so are you a Cubs fan? I'm Does a Cubs fan. At your cub, uh, at your cup. Born yeah. in Chicago, grew up in West Virginia, so I'm a Cubs, Bears. Uh, you know, Mountaineer fan too. Wow! So it's a nice, nice little mixture. Well, you are all messed up. Well, that's all right. <laughs> well, that's you're not far off with that. Uh, Eight fifty. Are you gonna have? Are you gonna have a a, 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 a phrase or something that people will recognize you no, by? I, I, the, not really. Uh, I've never coined one at all. This trying time. to think. Not what, what smart was enough to come up with something. What was Seth? Seth Kane had one for a little bit. Uh, go out and be a good sport or something. It was something like that. If you. If Play good sports and be a good yeah, sport. Yeah. It was something along yeah. those lines. All right. Well, Mike, it, it was good. Look, <laughs> n- you know, the wheel's never been reinvented. So, you know, he borrowed that from – I won't say so he somebody, stole it. No, he borrowed right. it from you're someone right. else. So he probably did, it. But, but it's, it stuck with me. It made me <laughs> want to have a better day. Just like Steve Graddick on Monday when he says, uh, go out and make it a great day. You're in tune with WLBB Carrollton. Mike, it was good to meet you. Thank you, sir. Enjoyed it. Thanks for look forward to listening Thanks to you having on me. all the Thank great communications for radio stations. Look forward to getting to know you and listening to you, too. Appreciate it. Thanks. 8.59. Come back tomorrow morning at 8.30. I was going to tell you who the guest was, but I don't, I don't know who it is. But I suspect Josh will uh, be the host. Uh, so uh, tune in tomorrow morning at 8.30 to find out. Anyway, have a great Monday, everybody.